Uh, so I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Keith Higgins. We're going to have a look ahead to this year's football championships. Uh, I suppose Keith will, will dive straight into it. Uh, it's a big game Sunday in Connacht, uh, Mayo Galway. Uh, it's been kind of building up to this one now, it seems months. There's been this emphasis on this, this big game. Um, both teams off the back of league final defeats. Uh, whose mm. camp would you rather be in? I suppose, obviously, you're a Mayo man, but where do you see it? Yeah, I don't know, to be quite honest. Um, I think if you'd have said, or if you'd asked that question before the league finals, I think you'd be, from a Mayo point of view, you'd be in a happy place. Um, you know, probably qualifying for a league final without probably playing really, really well at any stage throughout the league, getting lots of lads game time. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to the championship. And then you come into a league final missing the likes of Jeremy, the Robbie, Paddy, Oshin. Jordan then gets injured, you get on the back of a heavy, heavy defeat. And you're probably not quite, quite, quite sure where you are. So, yeah, it's a tricky one from a Mayo point of view. I think, obviously, the injuries are going to have a big bearing on Sunday. Um, if they get those four boys back, you know, they'll be as, as strong as they can be. Um, but I suppose if they're missing two, three of them, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be struggling a bit, of, I'd fear. So, a lot will depend on that. Hopefully, the big boys will be back in a how much training that I've done in the last couple of weeks, it's hard to know. But um, so, yeah, from a male point of view, it's kind of hard to know where they're at the moment. Um, again, Galway, probably similar enough in that, like, again, I had a good league campaign up until probably the last game against Frost Common. You know, I don't know if they changed the team around a good bit, but they probably win. You know, I'd say they put a big emphasis on that league final. Probably didn't play as well as they could, but still kind of came within a couple of score to win that. So, yeah, it's building nicely. I think four teams probably a small bit unsure of where they're at. Um, but yeah, look, typical Mayo Galway game, you can't see them in too much in it. Um, and I'd say Galway, well, you'd imagine they'd be eager to get one back on Mayo after the kind of final last year. And I suppose the way they kind of capitulated, I suppose, in that second half. Yeah, from Mayo's point of view, I know you mentioned that the league, it did it did seem like Mayo, even towards the end, to get the way it's her own, and they were trying to avoid the league final, but they ended up in it. Uh, is yeah. it even brush brush a defeat like that aside? Because let's be honest, Kerry are the favourites for the All Ireland, and they did a, a number on them, and it's a, it was a bad defeat. So, it you just say it's the league and we move on, or is that you know does it linger in the back of your mind? No, I think it has to linger. Yeah, I think it was a case of you no know, look, my looking at it or reading of it, and again, it could be way off the mark here, but it looked like a game where Mayo just went out and said right. We're going to go out, we're going to have a go at it. We'll see where it takes us. There didn't look to be any real tactical plan to it, defensive plan, attacking plan. It was just a case right with well to play and it kind of backfired on them a bit. So from that point of view, I think they probably have to be a question of a few things. Um, like you said, it wasn't a case of Kerry kind of pulled away in the last few minutes. It was a comprehensive defeat, even in the first half there. They were kind of hanging in three or four points, but never really looked like those in the gap. Um so, yeah, I think there'd be a good few questions. But like that, you know, you get four, four boys back, as I mentioned, from injury, and it's a completely different team. So, you know, it wouldn't be all doom and gloom. I think, in a way, they'd be right. They'd be looking at kind of what went wrong that day, where the weaknesses were. But I'd say at the same time, within a couple of days, that game was kind of part, and it was just full concentration on goal. I think if they focus on that one too much, you know, it would have a bad knock-on effect. So I think it was a case of right. See what happens, see what we can take, and now let's focus on Galway and, and take it from there. So, you know, there's probably, in a way, it's probably no harm sometimes. You get a defeat and maybe gives you a bit of a kick up the arse that you need, but at the same time, James wouldn't have wanted that comprehensive defeat like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the one positive probably from the league final was the return of Killian O'Connor. Um, so we had the time to record, we don't know the, the official team. Would you, do you think he'll start or will he, will he come off the bench again? Because there seems to be a shortage up front and a bit of pressure on Ryan O'Donoghue especially with Tommy Conroy's injury as well yeah because the injury to Tommy was, was always going to be huge but I suppose the fact that you had Keating coming back and Ryan in such good form if Tommy was there as well you know you had three really good forwards so um, do you start killing him? I don't know I'd say this is probably a case we made for starting him um, you know, he probably wouldn't last 70 minutes of championship action at this stage but do you start him get what you can out of him or you go down the route trying to bring him on after 40 minutes, you know, try and get a bit of a reaction out of the crowd. But at the same time, if Galway kind of nullify that reaction, then you're kind of wondering where do you go next. So 
there's probably a case we made for starting them. I suppose it just depends on how he's been going training the last two weeks. I mean, he got what, 15, 20 minutes against Kerry in a game where I doubt he, I could say if he got two touches, probably the ball, because there was just nothing going into him. Kerry was so down into that stage, so he couldn't really read into that. So a lot, I suppose, would have depended on probably how we'd have gone in. I'd imagine they had some A versus B last weekend. So a lot would depend on how we went in that. So this is a case you made for both sides of it. Personally, I suppose if he was going well, you want to start him, see if you can get a good 40, 50 minutes out of him um, and see where it takes you. So, yeah, again, it probably depends on what route James thinks is going to go down or I suppose how well he's been moving the last two weeks. Yeah, from Galway's point of view, they, obviously they were operating in Division 2. Um, is that having them as a disadvantage that Mayo were playing all them Division 1 games? Now, Derry and Roscommon are probably two, you know, decent top 10 teams. Um, you know, they've competed well against most Division 1 teams, but... Are they at a slight disadvantage coming in a bit more cold, maybe? I don't think so. I think, look, Division 2, it's a competitive enough division, in fairness. I mean, you look at Ross Common, Derry, and if you meet these teams, who are dogged teams, obviously they're probably not, so in fairness, and I don't mean the same disrespect to some of them, they're not all Ireland contenders, but they're dogged teams. So, you know, you look at, many were operating in Division 2 last year, I know it was kind of a shortened um, season, shortened league season. Do, do they make disadvantages? I don't think so. Um, so look, I don't think it's going to really affect Galway. I think anytime they come in against me, their confidence is off for some reason. They love playing against us. Um, and look, anytime you have Shane Walsh and former forward line, they're going to cause problems. You know, we've seen Paul Conroy in the first half of the last against Ross Common shooting the lights out. So, you know, whether he'll get that type of room the next day, you'd hope not. Um, but Galway will always kind of cause a threat going forward. I suppose it just depends on how well they can. They can uh, put, put match up defensively and they can get it. I suppose on top of the Mayo forwards, crowd out the defence a bit and kind of get a bit of a counter-attack game going. You know, they will cause problems. And I suppose Mayo seen that in the first half, the kind of final last year. You know, saying that I thought Mayo stood off going an awful lot. And second half, then when they pressurise them, obviously we've seen the results of that. So, look, from a goal point of view, I don't think they'll be too disheartened from the league final result. Obviously, they were right in it up until injury time. Um, when Murphy got that goal, so look, they'll take the positives from the league campaign. They got what they want out of it, back to Division 1, get an extra game in the league final. And like I said, it'll just be all guns blazing for Mayo. So I don't think they'll be too concerned about how the league went, to be honest. Yeah, is the Castle Bar factor a part to play at all? I mean, you'll probably know there's kind of this bit of a thing that Mayo don't seem to play as well in Castle Bar, and they haven't played there this year with the, with the new pitch. Will that come into effect at all, do you think? Um, yeah, look, our record, I suppose, over the last probably six, seven years in Connacht, in Mikhail Park has been quite poor. Um, even in the league, I think, you know, we wouldn't have a great track record there. You w- wouldn't be watching Call of Fortress or anything like that. It wouldn't be huge, great home advantage. What the pitch would be like, I honestly don't know. I haven't been on it. I haven't seen it. I think it's obviously the boys only been training the last couple of weeks, from what I understand. So, um, you imagine if it's a bigger, faster pitch, it should suit Mayo. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to, again, I don't think it's going to have a huge bear. And given the fact that Galway been down there and won um, in the last number of years, you know, they won't hold any fear of it. So I don't think it's the type of thing that Mayo can be relying on, to be honest. Yeah, is there an overemphasis? I mean, it, it was probably even said about Mayo that they have to go through the front door every, you know, in Connacht, but you got to mm-hmm. two All-Irelands through the qualifiers. Now, the round one qualifier will probably be a tricky one, but if you Get through that round one, you could be coming up against a, maybe a, a Munster loser or even a Leinster loser. Like it mightn't be as hard as it seems. So, is that being overemphasized the importance of this game as well? Um, no, I personally I think Mayo would want to go on through the front door this time. I think it was probably different in other years in the fact that I suppose when, when we were involved in 2016, 2017. That was a kind of a very experienced, kind of hardened team over the last three, four, five years, you know, again, played in All-Ireland finals, semi-finals consistently the four or five years before that. So it was a very kind of battle-hardened team. Whereas now, I suppose, again, it's completely changed. It's a new team. It's a younger team. Um, how they'd fare out if they had to travel the country going through the back door, it's hard to know. So I think they'd be putting a big emphasis this year on just going straight to a kind of final and getting, I suppose, taking the shortest route possible. So again, look, it's not it's not going to be easy with Gordon, Hitchie, Ross Common, but I'd imagine James would be going all out to kind of, like I said, just go the most direct route, really. 
Yeah, I mean, before we move uh, uh, touch on Roscommon for this game, I mean, I'm probably assuming you're going to tip Mayo, but I'll ask you anyways. I suppose I have to. Yeah, I, I can't go tip and go for, for any game. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to tip Mayo on that one. Yeah, I mean, on the other side, I said just there, Roscommon are coming up against Sligo um, in a couple of weeks. You probably can't make too many cases for Sligo, especially maybe after the New York performance. You know, I, I actually watched the game New York. If they maybe had maybe one or two more quality forwards, they would have mm. taken Sligo out. So you probably think Roscommon will be waiting in the final. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, I suppose you would have hoped Sligo would have made a bit of progress this year throughout the league. Um, obviously, I suppose what happened there in the last number of weeks with Red Oak is probably a tough one for a lot of the players and a lot of the county to take. Um, it was probably tough on some of them as well traveling over to New York to try and play a game given the circumstance the previous few weeks. But yeah, look, when you see New York coming that close, again, without having a competitive game in a long time, you, you kind of wonder. But, and again, you don't mean I just respect to Sligo here, but in fairness to Ross Common, again, a very, very good league campaign. Um, seemed to be kind of, maybe after kind of what happened last year against Galway and suppose a lot of the negative comments that were around the defeat there. So, You'd imagine actually going and having the well riled up for a kind of championship assault this year. So I think it could be an ideal side to draw for Ross Common. They'll get through Sligo, will they win by five points, they'll win by ten points. I don't think it really matters. They'll be going all gun plays and then for whether it's going there in a kind of final. And I think they're probably coming in from like said, an ideal position. Yeah, because I even know for myself, obviously, it's a big thing being avoiding Mayo and then, and Galway, whereas Ross Common can just Prime themselves that one game. It's always hard to beat the two in, in one year. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, even you go back to the league, like everyone was talking about Galway up until the last league game, how they'd gone unbeaten in Division Two and they were putting up good scores and they seemed to be going really well. Now, at the same time, they were conceding some big scores as well against some of the teams they got in Cork, you know. So there was no talk for us coming at all up until the last league game where they bet Galway and then obviously when they won the league final. So, like I said, I think they're in the ideal position. They'll have a couple more weeks to get, get ready for a kind of final, like to get through the cycle game, regardless of what they win by. Um, and yeah, they'll be priming themselves for a kind of final look if they were to win that. You know, they're in an ideal position. Yeah, so again, kind of championship. I'm going to go over for Scotland, obviously, but are you going to, again, side with Mayo? Um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to stick with Mayo, even though I don't think it's going to be as... It's not going to be straightforward, but, you know. It's like I said, anytime you play Galway, there's never much in it. Um, they'd be doing well to come through that, and like I said, Ross Common, I think, would pose a big, a big challenge in the kind of final if they were to get there. But yeah, I'm gonna to have to stick with Mayo. Yeah, uh, we'll move up uh, north. I suppose it is always the well, Connacht and Ulster are the two real competitive provinces. Another big one on Sunday is Donegal Armagh. There's been kind of a lot of talk mm. with these suspensions being overturned. Armagh and I think Funny Gold didn't appeal, so they are, they are missing two players. It's a bit of a mess, but it's a big game nonetheless. And I think you'd have to think Armagh will have to fancy their chances this year, having a real big, big year. Yeah, I think so. Um, like I said, I suppose it's, look, there's been a lot kind of talk about in the last week and two weeks, I suppose, in relation to suspensions and hearings and getting things overturned and all that so um probably should add a bit more spice to it you know i think we've seen the league game that there wasn't really much in it but i think like donegal have probably flattered to deceive a small bit probably over the last two three four years maybe um i would have backed them plenty of times to be potential ulster champions and maybe get to a semi-final or final and call it the dublin upset but they just seem to be Still over reliant on Mike and Murphy. I think the way they're playing just doesn't suit them. It's so so slow and back and over, and this seems to be very predictable. Um, and yeah, I think the way our mass started off the year, if they can kind of get back to some of that form where they're looking to really attack it at every opportunity, um, then I think they could cause and well, I suppose it wouldn't really be an upset, but they could cause a slight upset there and get one over on Donegal. So yeah, you'd hope there'd be a bit of spice to it, though. You'd hope it'd make things interesting. Um, but yeah, I suppose, like you said, the Ulster Championship, even you're looking through the rest of the games there, there is going to be some competitive games in it. But yeah, this, that one should be really interesting. Yeah, just on the, the appeals processing, it does seem to be a bit of a mess because um, 
I know when yourselves actually had a few of them in St. Lee Keegan was against Kerry, wasn't he? It was it the night before? And Jeremy Connolly, I think everyone just woke up to for the replay and he was starting. Like, is it something that has to be looked at? Because it does, you just don't know what it just feels absolutely. like the appeal yeah. now you, you get off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's it's always been that case where yeah, you get sent off and you get your suspension and you go to the appeal and even if that's kind of upheld there's nearly always kind of a second chance and there's always some technicality and like i said it comes down to last minute or the thursday night before a game or the friday night before a game and everyone's kind of guessing and wondering whether they'll get off or not and eventually they do and you know it's not really a distraction for the teams themselves to be quite honest i know like i said there you mentioned 2014 with lee you know it didn't it wasn't a distraction for us you know, we kind of had the right. If Lee's not playing, we knew what the team was going to be. If Lee was playing, we knew what the team was going to be. And in a way, players are a small bit, so selfish probably isn't the word, but like you will focus mostly on yourself and getting yourself right for for the game. Obviously, you'll kind of know your role and team role and team game and that. But in the day, it shouldn't matter who's starting in what position. Like, so, you know, it doesn't make a huge difference to the team, I don't think. But at the same time, yeah, yes, the question is it a bit of a joke? It is a bit of a joke, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know what other sport, there can be so many different appeal levels and, you know, it should be just a case of, well, the referee sends a player off, there's one appeals process, if everything held up and everything is done, go out there the law, that's it, there's no more done and dusted. Um, but I think the way, the way the appeals process has been over the last number of years, it just encourages teams just to keep appealing it, you know, so... Because you know eventually they, they could find some technicality to get a pair off on, and that's it. So they do have to look at it, but knowing the GEA, they're so slow to make changes and rule changes like that that's probably not going to happen in the next couple of years. But you'd hope something does change. Yeah, on the other side of the draw, um, Tyrone are playing Derry, which again should be another competitive game. And again, mm-hmm. kind of with red cards, Connor McKenna, we saw got sent off um, last weekend against Fermanagh. So be interested to see does he get off. But that'll be a tricky one for Tyrone again. It'll they have to be really battle hardened. They have probably Monaghan awaiting in the semi, and then obviously you'd imagine Donegal Armagh in the finals. It's a real tough route for them. Absolutely, yeah. I suppose again, the way things have been with Tyrone, I suppose that given the league campaign that they've had, given the number of players that have left the panel, you know, if it was any other year with Tyrone, they were having a bad league, it's still kind of back them to come out of Ulster or get to an Ulster final at least. The way things are going to moment, like you'd imagine Conor McKenna's suspension will get overturned because it didn't appear to be anything in it. Um, but they just seem to be struggling a bit this year to kind of get up to any real close, any real form that they got to last year. Um, what's behind it, it's hard to know. But saying that then, anytime you have a Tyrone team that have a bit of a chip on their shoulder at all or a bit of a siege mentality, like it, that was exactly what happened to them last year. I think with the whole COVID thing coming to the Kerry game, you just knew that they were going to come with a backlash. Whether they're able to do that this year, whether the players have the appetite to do it this year after winning at Ireland, it's hard to know. I suppose you'd only hope that if Derry do put in a real challenge to them, that you might see that reaction from Tyrone. But again, time will tell. It's, it's not the type of thing that players can just flick the switch and turn it on. If that appetite's not there in the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's going to be very difficult for them to pull it back. And you would expect Derry to kind of put up a good challenge for them. Like, Baron Derry, again, did a decent league campaign, decent championship last year. A lot of talk about them, whether they've progressed enough. So, again, that's a big challenge for Derry as well, whether they're actually going to be a real contender for us or now, or whether the last couple of years have just kind of been a bit of all talk. So, again, it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how both teams react. Um, and like I said, we just won't know, I don't think, until probably halfway through that game and we're both teams are at. Yeah, I mean, Monaghan are playing down and look, uh, no disrespect to down, but they seem to be in absolute disarray with, with management and the way the, the league went. See them, I have to imagine Monaghan will be waiting. And, you know, the way they stayed up again, I, they're just one of those teams that won't let go of um, Division One. Every year they're nearly predicted to go down so I mean it's hard again to know where Monaghan are quite at you, you nearly think they're at the end but then they come back with something yeah and again you don't want to write them off just because I suppose kind of what they've done over the last number of years so they've probably really overachieved over the last maybe 10 years given the population size of the county but you know even look at last year's Ulster final came within a point was it of Tyrone probably could have won that game um 
without ever really playing really, really well or kind of playing as well as they can, you know. So, again, you're kind of, you're expecting them to be really competitive. You're expecting them to put up to any team in Ulster. Like I said, whether they have another kick in them, you know, hope they do. But like like I said there, the way kind of things have been happening down over the last, well, it's not just the last few weeks, it's kind of been a bit of a mess for them over the last number of years, I suppose. Um, they're really struggling. So you can only see one way or there. Um, and yeah, like it's, again, you know, just like Tyrone, you'd hope there's another kick in Mana. And, um, and, you know, if they were to get ahead of Tyrone or Mana and get or Derry in a semi final, you know, again, they wouldn't hold any fears anytime you've McManus in the forward line and the way Jack McCarron is playing as well lately, they're always going to have a chance. Yeah, I mean, Tyrone are Irish, they obviously they're all Ireland champions. They are probably the strongest team in Ulster, but who do you see preparing in the final and, and coming out on top in the end? Um, I don't know. I'm struggling with the Tyrone Derry game, to be honest. Again, like you'd always you'd fear backing against Tyrone just because, like I said, when they have that kind of steel mentality and the fear of the world is against them, that there is another kick in them, they're just never say die actually they'll do they'll do whatever it takes to win. Do you know, I think that's a very good trait to have in a team that sometimes, you know, it is process orientated and all this, you stick to the process, but sometimes you just need that bit of a dog that'll go out and kind of just do whatever it takes. So you find it hard to back against her from that point of view, but um, probably go with a bit of a long shot and say maybe Armagh. I just think if they can click going forward the way they did at the early round of the league, they just have some quality players there. Um, and they seem to be kind of getting that balance right between getting penny numbers back and then just counter attack and getting the ball in quick. So if they're able to do that again, hopefully with the weather picking up and better days ahead and faster ball, you know, if they can get the like Serena and get these boys fire, you know, it could be an Ulster title there for them. So a bit of a long shot that we go with them now. Yeah, over Leinster, people are thinking that it's more open than before, but is it is it really? Can you see Kildare or Meath? Or as Dublin were in the league in Crow Park as well. I know Kildare bet them in Newbridge, but it seems like Crow Park is Dublin's. You know, it's it's hard to beat them there at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think again, you'd hope for all you can kind of hope for, I suppose, is a more competitive championship there. You'd hope that Kildare have to close the gap and they would appear to have closed the gap a good bit. Again, you just don't know what's going to come from Meath, whether they're going to put up any bit of a fight. I mean, again, there was talk of it two years ago and again, quick slate in the in the Leinster final. Um, so yeah, look, I mean, you're kind of probably looking at Kildare and Dublin. Again, I don't think you can look past Dublin. I mean, obviously, again, a very, very poor league for them. They look to be in a bit of disarray. But again, once you get a few boys back fully fit, McCarthy back fully fit, once you get Khan back in that full forward line, um, with Kenny and Dean Rock again, when you have three forwards like that close to goal, they cause a problem. So again, you'd have to imagine that Dublin will rebound from it get that bit of kind of structure back in place that they seem to be lacking. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, the only thing you'd hold for from Leinster is that Kildare make it competitive, really, I think. Um, I'm not kind of sure. Are they on the same side of the draw or are they kept the part? Uh, the semi-final draw has to be made after the court finals. That, that's not been yeah. done yet, so we don't know. Yeah, so again, you'd probably hope from a neutral point of view, you'd hope they're kind of kept the part and they both get to a Leinster final and kind of make it competitive. But as well, it's going to be interesting, like I said, me, you just don't know what to expect. Again, you'd hope there's a bit of a kick from them. Um, and again, I suppose, look, there's a lot of talk as well of, of Loud and what Nicky Hart has done with them the last two years, two promotions back to back. Again, I suppose, look, it'd be nice to see them having a bit of a run the championship as well. So, um, but look, again, realistically, you're probably looking to kill there, Dublin. And I just, as much as you'd like to see a bit of a change there, again, I just don't think you can look past Dublin. Yeah, is, is Dublin going down to Division 2 as bad a thing as it was made out? I mean, we seen Mayo a couple of years ago, blood sort of the younger lads in Division 2. Mm. Is a year in Division 2 for Dublin, you know, they can maybe blood a few more younger players. They're probably going to get promoted, let's be honest. Is it as bad as it, as it looks? Yeah, again, I think, it, you know, getting, getting relegated to Division 2 can affect some teams differently. Like, um. You know, Mayo going down that time, I don't think it was too big of a deal because, again, I suppose the way the split season came after that and, again, the short and league campaign, they were always going to come back up. Um, you know, years you've seen kind of Tyrone going down, I don't think it affects them too much because they come championship, they're a different animal, they rebound straight away. With Dublin, I don't know, is it going to be slightly different? Like, they are in a real rebuilding phase. There's a lot of younger guys, they're trying to come through. 
you'd nearly rather try and blood them in Division 1 rather than in Division 2, to be honest. Um, but again, you'd hope with the kind of the core group that they have there with Fint and Johnny Cooper, McCarthy, you know, McCarthy sticks around, likes of um, Kieran Kenny, likes of Khan. You imagine them boys to be enough experience and that they'll drag them straight back up. But I suppose it just depends on how quickly the rest of the kind of the younger lads coming through can develop. And like I said, you'd rather have the Division 1 to do that with them rather than in Division 2. But again, you'd assume in the long run it's not going to have too much of an effect. Yeah, I mean, for this year for Dublin, is it a semi-final minimum? Or, you know, Desi is under a lot of pressure. I mean, you assume they'll win Leinster, the quarter-final will be playing a qualifier winner if they get a good draw. You know, they could just end up in a semi-final and, you know, you're, you're back in it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the like thing, like, people are kind of talking about the demise of Dublin just because they got relegated from it. But obviously, we've seen kind of the injuries that they had and kind of, these are squads they had for some games so look if they were to kind of come through Leinster and like you said there they could get maybe maybe not a soft draw but maybe a softer draw in the quarter final all of a sudden they're back in a semi-final they could be back buzzing again if they get injury free and get their full squad out you wouldn't be one bit surprised if you saw Dublin back in the Larnham final again you know so and again like that's just down to the quality of the core group that they have there you know like any team that has kind of like those boys that I mentioned there in your team they're always going to be there, thereabouts. So, look, it's not beyond the realm of possibility for them to be back in the Ireland final. Um, so, yeah, you can never rule them out. Yeah, and then wrapping up Munster, um, probably it's been just all about the, the core Kerry sort of venue. The, the game itself not had too much. It's, it's almost like Kerry are going to win regardless. But, uh, again, there, there doesn't seem to be um, a compromise happening at the moment. Cork released another statement um, today, I think, and saying they won't be playing anywhere else. So, I mean, do you eventually see it being played in, in Cork? Yeah, look, I think it's it's kind of admirable that they're putting up such a kind of a battle to kind of get it in Cork. You win. I think I'd have more issues with the county board, really, rather than the Munster Council. But look, uh, yeah, I think as well, just say, right, play it in Cork, you win, get 11,000 in there, make a bit of an atmosphere. But ultimately... I don't think you can kind of see any other result with Kerry kind of walking away from there to handy enough win. I mean, like you just look at kind of performances during the league for Cork, you know, you'd see glimpses of maybe a bit of progress, but then it's really like taking one step forward, two steps back, like some of the scores they conceded. Um, look, they're struggling to get out of, you know, to stay up in Division 2 and their mind get out of it. It just shows where they're at. So look, regardless of whether the game is in Cork, you're in or down in Killarney, it's only going to be one result, but like I said, you just hope it's kind of played in Cork, get a bit of an atmosphere to it, get a bit of, I suppose, atmosphere around the game and see what happens. But yeah, it's only going to be one winner there. It's only going to be one winner out in Munster. Um, and it's very unfortunate. There's not much else you can say really about the championship. You know, the likes of Clare, I suppose, again, they're probably hoping that they just get a, a good run through the qualifiers. They're probably looking at a quarter final spot, given how well they've done Division 2 the last couple of years. I think they'd be disappointed if they don't get to a quarter final, going to get a decent run through the qualifiers. So, um, but yeah, apart from that, like I said, in fairness to Tip, and again, you're not, I don't think you, they're not the team that they were probably two, three years ago. Um, it'd be hard to see them kind of get a run going. So, probably looking at Kerry to stroll through and the likes of Clare, then maybe to hopefully get a run in the qualifiers. I think, yeah, I mean, Kerry are, I, I presume, your, your favorites for the All Ireland as, as, as many people's are, but how, how good are they? Do you think they've came on a lot from last year? Obviously, David Clifford again. He seems to be going to another level every single year, which you know it doesn't even seem possible. But where do you see them at? Yeah, I think look, they're like you said, they're they're odds on favourites. Hard, you can't argue with that given the way they perform in the league. I think, in fairness to Jack O'Connor, he seems to have brought in. Look, I said going forward, you never have any doubts about Perry, given the players that they have. Clifford, Sean O'Shea, Paddy Clifford, Dini, O'Dara, Sullivan, Spillane, all these boys looking to keep naming them off. So going forward, you wouldn't really have any issues with them. I suppose what's been their Achilles heel the last number of years is defensively and the middle of the field. Jack seems to have got a real change in attitude with them this year, more so than anything else. They seem to be really wanting to tackle and wanting to defend and wanting to get turnovers. And sometimes with the team, it is all about having that attitude. Like you can have as many defensive structures in place as you want, but if teams don't actually want to tackle and want to defend, you're wasting your time. So he really seems to have brought that fit of steel about them this year defensively. Um, I think that's probably why he probably put a big emphasis on the league, getting the performances like that and getting the league titles. So 
question marks, I suppose, around Kerry again. That's compared to probably at midfield as well. But again, the league finally just looked up. They completely dominated Mayor on the middle in the league final. So those question marks, while they're probably still a small bit there, look, they probably kind of answered a bit of them in the league. But ultimately, when it comes to the Ireland semi final, that's when the real questions will be asked depending on who they're paired up with. So, you know, they're probably not going to get really tested on because of that stage. Um, but at the moment, you can't really see any particular area where they're going to be caught out. Yeah, is it a bit of a miss that you you don't, you, don't, you want to test before the quarterfinals? You know, over the years at Leinster and Munster, that there, there won't be tests to come the All Ireland series, whereas Tyrone and Ulster and Mayo. But you'd have to say, would Mayo and Tyrone not like to be in Kerry's position, just having a you know two or three games to ease their way into the, into the season? Yeah, I think. <laughs> Given the level of injuries, Mayo have they'd love to be in that position, I suppose. Um, I think from a Kerry point of view, they're probably well, this group probably isn't wouldn't be as used to it. Jack is probably used to it, given down to his previous stints with Kerry, and again coming through Munster, again looking to really peak for a championship. Again, it's probably easier now the fact that the season is so short. Whereas previously you could have had you know, you'd finish the league and you could have had four or five weeks before you'd have a meaningful championship game. Whereas now it's obviously it's a lot shorter. So I think it's probably that's kind of again that's probably why they put such an emphasis on the league, um, getting to a league final, winning that league final because probably knowing that they're not really going to have an ultra competitive game for a number of weeks after that. So I don't think Jacks won't have too many concerns about that. I think he's like he's just going to be geared up for making sure that them boys are primed when it comes to Crow Park. And look, you look at last year in semi final against Tyrone, again Clifford kind of shot the lights out in normal time. Obviously went off injured, and if he just stayed on, chances there they probably could have won that game. So. Again, I think they won't have too many with mental scars or any fears of getting to the semi-final again. Those boys will be primed. And again, from that point of view, you just can't look past them. Yeah, you mentioned the split season. Are you are you in favour of that? Obviously, you, you, the, the clubs, you're the club scene now, basically, for, uh, on that on that side of the, the fence. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with it? July probably does seem a tiny bit early for an All-Ireland final, though. Yeah, a bit. But at the same time... Um, Look, in theory, the split season is is great. It gives all players, they know exactly when they're going to be playing. From a club point of view, you know your league is, or your champ, or your season is starting. You know it's going to be finishing. You know, there's a lot of talk about how, you know, there's not going to be real GA action from July onwards, but for 99 percent the players are going to be in, in the middle of their championship, I suppose. But at the same time, I just don't know if it's the way to go. Like I said, in theory, it's great. In practice, I'm just not really convinced of it just yet. Now, what the actual solution to it is, I don't know. Um, obviously, you probably have to give it this year, maybe next year, see how it goes. But I'm just not fully convinced by it just yet. Um, but look, we'll, we won't rule it out just yet. It could, it could work out great. But like I said, like I don't know what the answer is, but I'm just not fully convinced of it yet. I just think... I don't know. How, I don't know how to describe it. I'm, not, I'm probably blabbering on here. I'm not sure how to describe it or why. I'm not really in favour of it just yet. But like I said, I'm just not convinced about it. I'm not sure if I see the merits of it yet. Um, I can know people are saying from a club season, you know, all your players playing at the end of the year and all that. But I still think it's a bit of way to go into to get the perfect scenario. So. Yeah, is it probably just favourite? Well, not not favouring, but the likes of Mayo, Dublin, you know, the ones that go in deeper into the championship that they can start basically earlier. Like in in Roscommon, the chap the club championship will start in August, anyways, pretty mm. pretty much. Unless obviously Roscommon went on a run, which is which is fair enough. It's probably only helping the the, the counties that go in deeper, where most club championship would start in and around that time, anyways. Yeah, I think the one issue I'd have with it, and I'd probably see this from, this was. A Mayo hurling point of view as well, for previously, like the weaker counties, if you're playing your last inter county championship game in June, you're not meeting up again then to probably as a county panel till October, November. Yeah. So it's very, very difficult for those teams to get to really, really develop. And again, like I said, they've seen this with Mayo hurling over the years, you finish up in June and you don't meet up as a panel, you're going back playing club championship and yeah you might have three games of the club championship but if you don't go out of your group you know that's it you have three club championship games and a few club league games and that's it then you're not back even with your county until October so for the weaker teams I suppose or lower down teams it can be difficult for them to get any bit of momentum get any bit of real development 
Um, so I think they're the teams that will probably suffer more than, like I said, this was the Dublins or the Kerrys or Mayos who are kind of probably getting that bit further, but are kind of a better setups in the background as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, the introduction of the Towson Cup is in this year as well. And obviously you have the experience kind of the the hurling kind of equivalent with the Nicky Rackers, mm-hmm. the Christie Rings. Um, like with, with the buy-in, be, obviously it seems to be good um, from the hurling perspective. There, there's this worry that the football may not do the same. Where, where do you see it happening at, like, at that? Um, yeah, I'd have a bit of a worry for it, I suppose. One, you'd hope the players buy into it and the counties buy into it if they are in, in that division. But I suppose what we, from what I've experienced kind of with the lower tiers of hurling championship is that it's sometimes just paid lip service by Pro Park, by the GEA. They'll say they'll try and promote it. They'll say they'll try and put interest behind it and put funding behind it, but that might last a year, two years, and then it's forgotten about for a while. So my big fear is that if the interest from both the players and from Co Park isn't there, you're not going to get the interest from the supporters. It will fall off. Um, and then, like I said, it just it could be just kind of played without even people knowing about it. You know, like I know when the Christie Ring and the Nicky Racker competition were brought in with the hurling, they were supposed to be played kind of in August before maybe an Ireland semi final or quarter final on the big days. And that probably lasted a year or two years. And then all of a sudden, they were given their own slot. The three games were played off in one day in in the June, July. And that was it. And fairness, TG4 broadcast the games for a few years. Now they're, I think, on the TG4 app. You know, it's just, it's very difficult, I suppose, to kind of keep promoting the game in counties like Miro when Bo Park aren't really doing as much as they should be to promote either. You know, so that's the fear I have with the likes of Taji Cup is that they don't get the buy in from both parties. It could just fall off and they lose interest from the public and that players just won't want to play it then at all. Yeah, is the problem with the GA haven't moved with the, with the times as well? They're nearly rigid with this uh, broadcast structure that there is, there's only three Towson Cup games being broadcast on television. Like they took away GA go for the league even. All last year, they yeah. you, you had a pet, you could watch whatever game you wanted. You know, and fair, fairness RT, they do have a tough with the amount of, you know, it could be hurling and football on the same weekend but division four you might just see a league table like are they, are they missing a trick with all you know promoting it even further absolutely absolutely like i didn't realize was it three Talton cup games are going to show so yeah the, the semi-finals and finals that's what's down so like how how are people or how are the public supposed to kind of get behind it if they don't see the games you know like i mean you the the last round of league there, I suppose, you had so many teams vying for promotion, relegation across all the divisions. And how many games were televised that weekend? Maybe three or four. Yeah. You know, like how they're not at least putting all those games on an app or on a streaming service or something to at least let people view the games and at least advertise it and broadcast it and put support behind it. And otherwise, like I said, you know, you're showing a semi final and final. Like, I mean, how is the area around that supposed to be kind of, you know, supported? Like it's, it is difficult. They really need to kind of look at rather than just paying lip service and say, this is going to be great for lower level teams. It's going to be competitive games, at least make it attractive for them to play. Yeah. I mean, in that Towson Cup, is there anyone from division three and four that you'd be, you'd be looking at? I mean, Cavan are in there. They are most t- temporary, although they have a chance maybe of making a monster final if, if they got a performance like is it, how with them two divisions? Yeah, again, it's hard. Like I suppose, I'm just after saying there, it is very competitive. I suppose you mentioned a couple teams there. The one team I'm kind of actually looking forward to seeing how they do is is Leitrim. I suppose that's just because obviously Andy been involved with them. You know, like they came through London there at the weekend. Up, that was always going to be a tricky enough one for them having um, obviously lost Leitrim in the in the league. Look, playing Galway are. Mayo in the championship again there's only going to be one winner there and that's no disrespect to them so it'd be interesting to see how they get on you'd like to see them kind of getting a good run at it um, again you'd have to fancy the likes of um, Cavan given I suppose where they've been over the last number of years but again you look at how Antrim even have been like they've had a fairly a good league campaign so again the likes of them you'd hope if they were to get a decent run into the Talchin Cup again Get a bit of success out of that, and you'd hope to have a knock on effect into the following year. So, look, that you'd, you'd imagine likes of Cavan probably tip maybe, but I'm just interested to see now how Antrim Leach can get on, just I suppose obviously because of Andy. But again, given the kind of league form Antrim have had, 
you'd hope they would have kicked them the championship as well. Yeah, it's the problem with the current structure as well. I mean, Leach would never have wanted to lose to London, but their reward is to basically, I mean, let's be honest, probably get hammering by by Mayor or Galway. Like, that does no good for anyone. No, exactly. And look, that's going to be the challenge for them, I suppose, is, and again, the reality of it is they're, they're not going to win the game. What the winning margin for Galway and Mayo is going to be, it's hard to say, like I said, I could be Anthem from 5 to 15 points, you wouldn't know. But again, I suppose it's how they react to that. Whether they'd have their sights set on before that game of getting the run the Tajian Cup, you don't know. Again, I suppose it's probably not something they want to be thinking about too much. But again, you have to be realistic. So I suppose it really just depends on how the reaction that they get from that loss. It's a big loss, could be difficult for them, but you'd hope, I suppose, they have kind of their sights set on something bigger than after. Yeah, just a quick one on Andy Moore. And was he always, I suppose, the one the one person in the dressing room that you saw the manager in him? Um, you know, you'd be shared the dressing room for 10 or 15 years, whatever long it was. And he's had a, you know, a, de- a decent year of some good, they, they went down to Tipperary and, and won as well. So not a bad start to the year anyways for him. No, it wasn't a bad first year. I think, yeah, he was probably all that one player he always thought would definitely get into coaching. He was always kind of, he began to be very deep think for the game. He'd be always looking for ways of improving. Um, I think he even said himself early on that he would get involved in coaching at some stage. And I suppose once he finished up, he went straight in with the under 21, the under 20s. Um, probably didn't see him getting involved in senior inter county so soon. But again, I suppose look, that's the type of guy he is. He, he's, uh, he'd have no fear in throwing himself into something like that. So look, I suppose that league game against London was probably one that they would be kicking themselves with. Um, that they lost, you know, if they won that, they'd be kind of really kind of would have been pushing for promotion. So, up division four is a, bit, a tough, tough place to get out of. Like I said, if they were to get a kind of a half decent run, the championship at all just could spark that bit of interest amongst the county again, amongst the players to give next year a right good rack with division four again, try and get promotion out of it. Look, if you were to get promotion out of division four next year, it wouldn't be a decent, it wouldn't be a bad spell on them. But, I suppose for him, it's probably, uh, you'd imagine it's a two or a three or a four year project for him. Like, you know, I suppose he's trying to go in there, maybe change the way they do things, change the culture, change the mindset of the players. So it's not something that's going to really happen just in one year. He's probably looking long term there, you'd imagine. Yeah. And the, the wider All Ireland Championship, uh, would you have a, a dark horse at all to maybe get to a semi final or to have a, a good run at it? Um, dark horse. I suppose I couldn't really call our mad dark horse after tipping them for Ulster. Um, like you'd fear that Ross Common could do something. <laughs> Kill me to say it. Um, I just, I just think like what thing with Ross Common, like they've always had good forwards, like they're really good forwards there. The two Murchers, the two Smiths. Um, you know, like if they were to click going forward, if they were to get things right defensively, I think there could be Anthony will have a bit of a kick in them after the way last year finished up. So as much as it might kill me to say, you know, if they were to get to a quarterfinal league and Anthony could happen. But apart from that, like apart from Neymar, Ma, maybe Dury, if they were to get over Tyrone, if they're the kind of, again, Kildare, maybe did they flatter just even the league? There's probably three or four teams you think could maybe have a big year and get to a semi-final, but really outside of Kerry, go away Mayo, Dublin. Like, you know, I think that's about it really. But like, I don't think there's anyone that's kind of really can touch Kerry at the moment, unless Tyrone really get their act together over the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean, people are kind of billing it as the most wide open um, championship in years. Probably because Dublin are coming away, but the problem is Kerry look a good bit ahead as well. They've nearly just replaced the moment, but we'll see by the end of the year, was that was that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, if you go back three or four years ago, you obviously had Dublin way out in front and then you had maybe Kerry Mayo. It was probably a Tyrone maybe or Donegal kind of as your chase and pack. Whereas now you probably have five or six teams you could say are in the chase and pack. But again, like I said, you have to say Kerry way out in front. Yeah. And probably lastly, footballer of the year prediction. Is, is it an, an uh, obvious one? <laughs> yeah, look, if he keeps going the way he's going, you know, even if he doesn't improve between now and the end of the year, if he just keeps that level going, there's only going to be one footballer of the year. Um, yeah, I think you can't argue with the man. He seems to be able to do everything. I'm just I'm nearly happy I'm retired now at this stage. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 he's probably the best I've ever seen. I mean, I, obviously, I've only been watching the game maybe 15 years or so, but like, he really has everything. His height, his pace, mm-hmm. he, both feet, you don't know what um, 
but he's going to kick off like he really is just the complete package yeah like you said there look when the fellow like that can kick points from 30 40 yards off either foot it's tough to defend but even you see the goal he got against O'Hora there like me but there was no cover there to help O'Hora but at the same time he's so big and tall he's, he's a big long step big long bounce you know he's away from you straight away and he's that big and tall you just can't get around to kind of get a hand in either way so you know he's got he's got the full package in fairness to him um again but I suppose look you'd be expecting big things from Sean O'Shea as well I suppose obviously there's been very little talk of him over the last few weeks because he's been out injured I'm not sure what stage he's at or when he'll be back but you know again if Clifford was to be double marked, double teamed in a lot of games, it could free up a lot of space for Sean O'Shea. And again, you know, I would be surprised if he shot the lights out as well. Yeah, well, let's hope for an entertaining championship anyways and hopefully an open one and Kerry not running away with it. But uh, Keith, thanks very much for your time. No problem. Yeah, hopefully it'll be, uh, like I said, an enjoyable championship.